Hello, and welcome to this video for the Physics 132 lab, which will introduce how to apply the ideas of Monte Carlo simulation to propagate errors. Let's begin by reviewing sort of the assumptions of data that we are working under. First, we're assuming that for a continuous variable, such as the measurement of a thickness of a nickel, there are an infinite number of possible measurements and that these will follow a normal distribution characterized by a mean and a standard deviation. We also are assuming that the mean of our sample, x bar of sample size n, given by this formula, is a good estimate of the mean of the entire population of all the possible measured values. We're also assuming that the standard deviation of our sample, given by this formula and discussed in a prior section, is a good estimate of the standard deviation of our population. So in this video, we're going to go through how to propagate errors using Monte Carlo using our example data that we've been using throughout this lab. So here is our example data that you've seen several times through discussed in this lab. You have 10 measurements of radius and 10 measurements of the height or thickness of our nickels. And you also have the mean and standard deviation that we've seen several times. We're assuming that these measurements are independent, that the thickness of the, the, of the nickel and its radius don't, aren't correlated with each other in any way. So for example, here, you can see that for observation number six, the radius is above the mean while the height is actually below the mean. So this is sort of what we mean when we say that, that they're independent. They, just because the radius is high doesn't necessarily mean that the height or the thickness is high. Now going back to our assumptions, the first assumption discussed in the last slide, we're assuming that these radii of all the possible values of this continuous variable, the true values fill out a normal distribution that looks like this. It has a, a mean of 1.048 under our assumption that the mean of our sample is a good estimate of the mean of the population and has a standard deviation of 0 0.013 under the assumption number three that the standard deviation of our sample is a good estimate of the standard deviation of our entire population. And we're assuming the same is true for the height. So both are bell curves. Note that the horizontal axis of height is quite different because, well, the bell curve of height is centered on the mean value for the height, 0 0.176. So under these assumptions and thinking about these data, let's talk about the principles of Monte Carlo error propagation. So the basic idea is you choose random values for each of your input variables. So you choose randomly from the known distributions. In our case, we have these bell curves for height and thickness, and we're going to choose randomly from them. You then do your calculation, whatever your calculation happens to be, with the random values you've chosen. And then after you've calculated, you add your result and begin to build up a sample of results of your calculation. One entry for each set of random values that you've chosen. And then you do that a whole mess of times as many times as you basically have time for. And that leaves you with a sample of results of your calculation from which you can measure the mean and standard deviation of this sample of answers. And this gives you a result. It gives you a central value, the mean of your sample, and an uncertainty, the standard deviation of the sample of your results. How does it work in our example? Well, we're going to choose a random value for each variable. We're going to choose a random height and a random radius from our normal distribution. Then we're going to go and calculate volume, pi r squared h, and build up a sample of volumes. For each pair of height and radius, we're going to get a volume and build up a sample. And we're going to repeat this a bunch of times. We can measure the mean and standard deviation of this sample of volumes, and that will give us our result. So how are we going to practice this technique? Well, the rest of this video will focus on how to do this sort of by hand in a very tactile and easy to understand way using the data that you've collected and we'll only do 10 Monte Carlo iterations, 10 times through this loop. And this is just like I said, to sort of give you a sense of how this works. 
And then in the latter section of the lab, you learn how to do a more thorough and accurate job by using a spreadsheet to do a full and complete Monte Carlo of your results. So now let's move on to doing a Monte Carlo simulation sort of by hand in a very tactile way. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the measurements that you've taken for your nickel. So here are our measurements uh, that we've been using throughout these tutorials. You can see the trials and the radius in centimeters and the height also in centimeters as you're going along. Now the whole principle of Monte Carlo is randomness, right? To pull things at random. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take these data points and we're going to cut them up. And this is what I want you to do as well is, is write down all your radii on little slips of paper and all of your heights on little slips of paper and then cut them up. All right, so now I've gone and cut all my data up. You can see all the radii are cut up and all the heights are going to cut, be, are all cut up. You're also going to need for this part of the lab two little containers. So I've got myself two little Tupperware, look kind of like this. It's nice if they got lids, but it's not required, and you're going to need two of them. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your container and you're going to take all your radii and drop them in one container, like so. And then you're going to take your other container and take all of your height and drop them in that container, like so. So now I've got a box of all of my radii and a box of all of my height. And what we're going to do is take each box and give it a good shake. So give it a good shake. And then you're going to open them up, reach in, and pull out a number. Just pull out the ones that are on top here. And you see I've got a radius of 1.060 and a height of 0.180. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the volume using these numbers here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little spreadsheet. Uh, you can see here I've created a little spreadsheet in Google Sheets. And this is our first run. We've drawn a radius of 1.060 centimeters and a height of 0 0.180 centimeters. How do we calculate volume? Well, we, we know that the volume is pi times r squared, so I'm just going to multiply it twice, times the height. So that gives me the volume. And what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this process many, many times. So I'm going to take these two measurements and importantly put them back in the containers put them back in shake them all up again reach in and grab a new radius and height this time for my second trial, my radius is 1.055 and my height is 150. And my volume is the same thing. You see Google Sheets even makes a suggestion of what my formula might be. Turns out that's right, so I'll just press enter and accept it. You can see highlights, and so those are the right ones. And so there's my volume. And I'm going to do this 10 more times. So now I've gone and done my 10 trials and you can see that 0 0.15 centimeters for the height came up a couple of different times and even a couple of times in a row. This makes sense. 0 0.15, we measured that number a lot. It was in the bowl a lot of times. So it would make sense that I would pull it out of the bowl a lot. And I probably pulled the exact same piece of paper out of the bowl a couple of times. This is perfectly okay. This is part of 
the process of the Monte Carlo error propagation technique. So now I have 10 radii and 10 heights, and I've gone and calculated the volume for each combination, as you can see here. And so now I've got a set of volumes, and what we're going to do is we're going to go and calculate the mean and standard deviation of this set. So I'm going to type average and highlight all the numbers, as was discussed in a prior video. And that's going to give me an average volume of 0 0.570. And then I'm going to calculate the standard deviation, making sure to use standard deviation of a sample, because this is a sample. Once again, highlight all the numbers, as was discussed in a prior video. And that's going to give me a standard deviation of 0 0.061. I'll probably label this table, type mean and standard deviation, so that we kind of know what we're looking at. And I'm going to use these results to get the final number that I would publish, right? So my final volume that, I'm, that I would publish somewhere is I would take the mean and this standard deviation, I would round to one digit of uncertainty, so I'll just keep the 6, and then round my mean to the same number. So my final number is 0 0.57 plus or minus 0 0.06, and that is in centimeters cubed. So let's add that so that we know what this is. So centimeters cubed, and that's my final answer. And this is a basic idea of how you do a Monte Carlo error propagation sort of by hand. Like I said in a later video, we'll go through how to do a more thorough job pulling numbers from a true continuous distribution that is a bell curve and doing it many, many, many more times using spreadsheets. But hopefully this gives you sort of a hands-on feel for how this method works. This concludes this video.